it's easy to assume that just because inverse kinematics uses maths it's difficult. It's really not. In this video I'm going to show you how to use five simple lines of maths to calculate the inverse kinematics for this little robot arm. We'll be using the robot arm I built in the last video in this series. Well, almost the same one. I've upgraded it since then with these new servos and these ball bearings, just to give it a smoother motion. Let's say we have a point here at x equals 10 and y equals 5. We can then raise it up in the air slightly, so let's say that z equals 5 here as well. This is the point that we want to move our robot to. The first axis we want to consider on our robot is the rotation of the base. Now this doesn't affect the height of the gripper at all, so nothing in the z direction. This means that we can find out the angle of the base simply by drawing a line from 0, 0 to our point in x and y. The angle here will tell us the angle that we need to move the robot's base to. Let's label that B. We can use very simple trigonometry to work out this angle. We simply say that tan of the angle B is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is 5 over 10 in this case. We also need to work out the length of this side. Let's call it L. Using Pythagoras, we can say that the square of L is simply the square of this side plus the square of this side. Now that we've worked out the angle for the base, we need to start considering the other arms. We can define a new plane here with z as one axis and the side L that we just worked out as the other axis. Here's the new plane taken onto a fresh piece of paper. And here's our point that we want to move the robot arm to in relation to both the z axis and our new L axis. To keep things simple to start with, we're going to pretend that we've got a single arm here instead of two arms. Now in order to move our arm to the right point, we're going to need to know two things. We're going to first of all need to know what angle that we need to move here, and we're going to need to know the length of this arm. We'll call them phi and h. So using the same maths as before, we know that tan of this angle here, phi, will equal the opposite over the adjacent, which is z over l. And we know that the square of h will equal the square of z plus the square of l. Now if we draw our two arms on here, we can see that we can make this one arm defined by an angle and a length up by two arms, just defined by two angles. The next thing to do is to find this angle here, which we'll call theta. In this case, this is nice and easy, because on our little arm, both of these arms are the same length. In this case, 75 millimeters. So we can simply split this isosceles triangle defined by these three lines into two right angle triangles. Now we know the length of two of these sides, 75 and h over two. We can say that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is h divided by 2 over 75. Thankfully, that's all of the trigonometry done now. We just need to work out how to transform our angles phi and theta into the actual angles that we want our arm to move to. I find this a lot easier to visualize if I mirror our two arms here, down here, so that we create a parallelogram. We know that the angles this end and this end must match, as must the angles here and here. This means the two angles we need to find are this one for the first arm, which we'll call A1, and then this one here for the second arm. It's difficult to see up here exactly what it relates to, so we're going to move down to the bottom here. We know that this angle is exactly the same as what we were just looking at, so we'll label that A2. Now we had our angles from before, phi and theta, and it's easy to see that our angle A1 for our first arm is simply equal to phi plus theta, and our angle A2 is equal to phi minus theta. And that's it, that's all the maths we need to do to know how to position our arm. Let's have a look at the code. So this small function is all we need to be able to perform the inverse kinematics. We simply take in our x, y and z coordinates 
and then do all the trig and Pythagoras theorem that we were just going over, translate them into the A1 and A2 angles that we just worked out, and then tell our arm to move to those angles. If you want to see the rest of the code for this project, please check out my previous video on the subject, which I'll link up in the corner. Now at last we can see our little robot arm move in straight lines in both the X and Y directions, and then also in the Z and L directions. Any small inconsistencies are down to the cheap little servos that we're using for the arm here. If I've helped you understand this or made you think about it in a different way, please hit the like button to let me know. Consider subscribing for more projects like this, and let me know down in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see. If you would like to build your own arm, or just check out the code for this, all of the CAD encoder as always on my GitHub page which is linked down below.